When it comes to deciding what to buy, price can be a really important factor for the customers. They might be wondering whether something is too expensive or if they can find a better deal somewhere else. It's also really important for retailers and brands to stay competitive with their pricing so that their products stay popular. Sometimes price needs to change frequently to make sure that they are not too high or not too low. And of course, it's also really important for the businesses to make profits so they, that they can keep running. And beyond that, price can also affect a brand's reputation and how it's perceived compared to, the, uh, compared to its competitors on the different price ranges. Hi, my name is Pavelas and today I'm super excited to talk about driving e-commerce success through pricing data, a powerful knowledge of prices and the impact it can have on your business. So for today's agenda, uh, I'm going to be talking about price optimization and dynamic pricing strategy. We'll touch upon uh, price monitoring, review price monitoring architecture. I will show you a demo on how you can create your own price monitoring solution. And lastly, I will answer some of most, question, most common questions asked uh, before I jump in into my first topic, I want to encourage you to leave your questions and comments in the QA box and I will be answering those questions during the webinar. As well, during the webinar, I will show you so, some code samples. After that, you can find those on Oxlabs GitHub. So, uh, the first topic would be price optimization. And price optimization is a strategic process that involves analyzing customer and market data to identify the ideal price points for product or service. It is done by considering factors such as customer demand, production cost, and competitor's pricing. In such way, business can determine the optimal price that will maximize sales and profits. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, price optimization strategies, including cost plus, value-based, penetration, uh, price skimming. But one that we are particularly interested in today is dynamic pricing. And dynamic pricing is a strategy that involves adjusting the price of the product uh, or a service in a real time based on market demand, inventory levels, and other factors. Uh, this strategy allows businesses to respond quickly to changes in the market conditions and optimize prices to maximize revenue and profits. Price monitoring is an important part of dynamic pricing strategy. So let's take a closer look what it actually means. Price monitoring aims to create awareness of trends and patterns in competitors' pricing strategies. Such knowledge should help create tactics directed towards making offerings more desirable. Uh, price monitoring helps to detect, understand, and conduct price changes, uh, triggering alerts on price change events, price comparison, knowing where the company stands compared to the competitors, and price analytics, analyzing the retrospective of the change. Uh, price monitoring technical architecture consists of four main actions. Collecting URLs, we need an initial uh, database of the product that we want to monitor. Acquiring the data from the competitor's website using web scraping. A data parsing, a step to convert HTML to structured data such as JSON. And lastly, data cleaning and normalization. When building your own price monitoring system, there is a set of actions that you will need to take care of. So the first step is to have a database of product URLs that we want to monitor. The database can be populated either manually or automatically. And to do that automatically, you will need to build a crawler that can traverse through website, uh, through target website, collecting URLs and storing them in the initial database. So the next step is to build our scrapers that will do the actual scraping of the URLs in the database. Uh, here you will need to handle a couple of important factors for a successful scrape. So proxy settings, there are a few decisions to make here. Proxy type, it's data center or residential proxies, they can have a really big impact on your block rate. A proxy location, so some of the targets do content localization based on proxy location. Next you need to handle fingerprints. There are two types of fingerprints that can, that can uh, be created during your attempt to scrape a website. So it's active and passive fingerprints. Where passive is checked from our HTTP requests, uh, and that involves like TLS version, HTTP protocol, or uh, headers. Uh, where active fingerprinting uh, is checked by JS challenges. So hardware specifications, headers, navigator information, and behavior like uh, mouse movements. 
So after that you will need to decide either to use headless or regular request library. More and more websites are loading their content through uh, additional API requests that, that is initiated by JavaScript code. So the issue with regular requests that we make is that you are not rendering JavaScript. In that case you would need to use a headless browser. The downside of headless browser is that it's resource intensive and it takes much longer to process request. And also you need to handle all the, all the faulted requests and have some kind of mechanism to do the retries. Okay, so you have, the, you have successfully scraped the target website and now you have the HTML code. Uh, you need to parse that HTML code into a structured format like JSON. Uh, for that you would need to write your own parser that would use CSS or XPath selectors to get the data points that you need. Next, after you have the parsed data, you will need to store that into the database, do the uh, cleaning and normalization, and finally do the uh, data analysis. I really want to mention that visibility is really important uh, when building stable and performant price monitoring systems. It is crucial that you have uh, visibility on each step uh, performance. For example, website layout changes uh, frequently, so your success rate, uh, parsing success rate can drop. Uh, so you need to alert yourself on such events and react accordingly. Oxlabs has clients who integrate proxies into their custom-built price monitoring systems. However, we see a trend where more and more clients, both new and existing, are opting to move away from maintaining scraping and parsing. Instead, they are choosing Oxlabs web scraping and parsing products to handle these tasks, freeing up their resources, um, focusing on data analysis, which, is, which has a greater impact on the business. We've covered a lot of ground already, and now it's time to turn our attention on how Oxlabs products can help bootstrap your price monitoring infrastructure. So I have mentioned before that you can populate your initial product database by crawling target website. Here Oxlabs have specifically built a product that's called uh, Web Crawler. So web crawler can accept specific instructions on how to crawl a website and deliver, your, deliver you either a sitemap, HTML, or parse data where it's possible. All these steps I mentioned in previous slide of worrying about fingerprints, proxy settings, and running headless browser are covered by Oxlabs e-commerce scraper API and web scraper API. So e-commerce scraper AI is a pre-built scrapers for most popular e-commerce websites there are. E-commerce scrapers has a set of features that you can configure uh, to get the data suited for your needs. As well, some of the e-commerce scrapers has already pre-built parsers. You can just specify parse through parameter and get parsed HTML data. Web Scraper API is a universal scraper that can scrape any website on the internet. It, is, it, it has a... It has as well multiple settings that you can set, like for example, JavaScript rendering. You can always find more information going to docs.oxilabs.io website. Parsing is done on our infrastructure as well. I mentioned before that there, are, uh, that there is our pre-built parsers for some of e-commerce websites, but now I'm really excited about this new feature that we are about to release. It's called custom parsers, where you can where you can provide your CSS and XPath selectors during the job creation process, and we'll do the parsing on our end. So team worked really hard on this feature, and I hope that you will have chance to test it out. So to recap, what happens here is uh, you just need to grab URLs from your database and send a request to our API, where all the hard work is, is done on our end. You will get back the parsed JSON data, which you will need to store into database and go through data cleaning and normalization process, and lastly, data analysis. I mentioned a lot of steps that you need to complete, like uh, you need to crawl to get your initial database, you need to do web scraping, parsing, uh, storing everything. So there's a lot of steps that you need to orchestrate. And in today's demo, I will show you how you can do that with Apache, uh, Apache Airflow, a great tool that can uh, orchestrate and schedule uh, your, your tasks. Before I jump into my code base, uh, I would like to remind you that you can leave some comments and questions in the QA box, uh, and we'll be answering those uh, during, during the webinar. Okay, so I opened my PyCharm project uh, where I have some, uh, some Airflow files here on the left, and I already created some DAX files. 
So, uh, but maybe first let's check the database. Yeah, I have, uh, I'm using a SQLite database and I have uh, already created uh, three tables here. Uh, it's crawl jobs, product prices and products. So, uh, crawl jobs uh, table, if you remember from my slides, I said that we need to build some, build an initial database, yeah, we need to crawl the website. So, I'm going to be storing uh, crawling jobs in this table. Uh, the crawling jobs that I've created with web crawler uh, product, Oxlabs web crawler product. Then in products, I'm going to store the URLs, uh, URLs that uh, that we want to monitor. And in product prices, we're finally going to store the product URL and the price uh, for that particular uh, scrape job. Right. So we can check uh, the. Python files that we have, uh, so we can begin from a create crawl uh, job. So here, uh, if you look at the bottom of the, the of the file, I have uh, DAG, I'm using DAG class to describe a Airflow DAG, which has one uh, task, uh, and that task is to create a crawling job. Um, we can check that function, so you can see that I'm using a request and post request to a web crawler API. And it's important to pass the payload to that API. So here uh, I'm describing the payload. Uh, we can go through it. So URL is uh, the URL that we want to crawl. And today we are going to be crawling uh, books to scrape. It's a nice website that loves to be scraped, uh, which has a bunch of books. This one is pretty good, actually. Uh, so yeah, it has a bunch of books. Uh, it has uh, 50 pages and it has next uh, button to, to go to the next um, next page. Yeah, so we, in the URL parameter, we add books to scrape uh, uh, URL. Uh, and then there is this important uh, parameters, filters. So in filters, it has uh, two, two values, so crawl and process. Crawl value, uh, we add red, regex to and specify the pagination, yeah, how to go to the next page. Where in process, uh, we specify which uh, URLs to process, yeah, and to process it's, it means to either parse or get HTML. Or in my case, I'm building, I want to build a sitemap, yeah, I want to build a sitemap uh, of URLs and those URLs I'm going to be uh, placing in products table. Uh, there's also this parameter max depth, uh, which basically uh, tells web uh, web crawler how deep you should go through the pages. Yeah, uh, for the this demo, I'm just leaving it as one. I want to go uh, to basically scraping two pages, uh, but for the production, you can add like minus one, and it's just unlimited. It will go uh, as much as it finds like crawling uh, crawling uh, pages to crawl. Okay, yeah, so output uh, also like type, uh, I, like I mentioned, it could be a sitemap or HTML. Uh, and in the HTML case, I would get back HTMLs and uh, parsed. In parsed case, I would get parsed data if we support that, um, that website. So for the support of the website, you can go to docs.oxlabs.io. There's like e-commerce web scraper API, and we support a bunch of uh, e-commerce websites that we already can parse. Okay, so for for this case, I'm using sitemap, and basically what I do, uh, I've, I'm sending a post request with this payload to web crawler API. I get back job ID, web crawler job ID, and then uh, I'm connecting to the uh, SQLite database and inserting the the job ID with status pending. One of the cool Apache Airflow features are its user interface. So we can jump into the user interface. The beginning of the inter the beginning looks like this. Yeah, I have three DAGs already created. We just went through the create crawl job. So let's go inside a crawl job. Uh, this is generated, by the way, automatically. You just need to describe uh, describe your DAG. And if I go to the code part, uh, you can see all the code we just reviewed before. Uh, okay, so let's run this DAC and we should be able to create a crawling job uh, on Web Crawler API. So you can see that a new job was started. Um, 
And if I open that uh, task, uh, one of the cool features as well of Airflow is that you already get the, the logs, the log output here. So it's green, that means that the job was created and if we would go to our database, uh, we should be able to see, uh, we should be able to see uh, the newly created job. So I will select all from crawl jobs. And here we have a job with the status pending with uh, was created um, recently. So now when we create a crawling job, it takes some time to process. Yeah, that's why you have two separate DAGs. One DAG is create crawl job uh, and another DAG would be to collect it. We can go to, to my code and just review how the collection is, uh, is being done. Again, at the bottom, I describe this DAG and that's enough for, for to have this in user interface. And here above, so I have uh, a task to collect crawl jobs, which basically what I do is connect to the database. Uh, to the database, I select all crawling jobs uh, with status pending. Um, then we check, well, if there's no jobs, we just uh, end it here, yeah. Uh, but if we do have jobs, uh, that means that we need to collect the results of the crawling jobs. So for each job ID that we get uh, during the creation, uh, I send a GET request. Um, I send a GET request and then I get back, uh, get back the response. I check if there's uh, any events. If, uh, if there's no events, that means that crawling job is still running. Uh, but if we do have events, uh, I check the status of the first event. And if it's faulted, then that means that the crawling failed. Uh, so what I do is just update that uh, database yes, uh, with, for that job with status faulted. Um, okay, so if it's not faulted, we can move on. Yeah, And now uh, what I need to do is collect the actual results. So this is the specific URL to collect sitemap. Uh, so I just add the job ID into that URL and I send a GET request and uh, back in the response I check uh, results. This is by the way I'm using GLOM. Uh, GLOM is a library to, to, to traverse through nested data. It's just an easy way to, to get to the data you want if, if the JSON is, uh, is nested. So um, yeah. What I do is go to results, uh, it's a first list item, and then sitemap, um, and the values would be a list of product URLs. And for each product URL, I'm just inserting it to the table products. Uh, I'm inserting job ID, uh, um, a job ID and product uh, URL. Okay, so yeah, if, if it's uh, a new product, if the URL is not existing in the product table, we insert it. If it already exists, we just um, skip that part and uh, write some printing message, which by the way, automatically, uh, you can see it on user, uh, user Airflow user interface that I displayed before. And whenever we are done with inserting the product URLs to our product table, uh, I'm going to set the crawling job to done. Yeah, so we wouldn't uh, next time collect it again. So let's go to uh, to the user interface of Airflow and let's run the collect uh, crawling jobs. Okay, so we can see that our uh, collect crawl job is finished. Uh, if I look at the logs, I can see that uh, some new URLs was uh, stored into the database. Uh, so we can go to the PyCharm, open the table, and hopefully, yeah, we're gonna see that uh, that the products was inserted. So this table is the table of product URLs that we want to monitor, yeah, constantly monitor on on schedule it, uh, based. Right. So we have our product URLs. Uh, the next step would be to actually go to that product URL and scrape the data and get some parse data. Um, I've created another file, it's scrapeproducts.py and as always in the bottom of the file I describe the DAG, uh, describe what functions it has uh, and we can go to look at, at, uh, at the tasks that it has. So one task is get products. Um, 
get products which uh, again I'm connecting to the, the database and I'm selecting uh, all the URLs from products uh, table. I select it all, uh, I build a list out of it and I return to that list. So one of the cool features that Airflow has is that it can uh, do jobs, do, ta do tasks uh, par parallelly. Uh, it's using salary uh, workers for that and uh, for each of these URLs, we are going to create a new scraping job, uh, which basically uh, will run asynchronously. Okay, so I have my scrape products uh, function, uh, which, would, which will get a product URL. And here we have a payload that we have to send to our scraper API to create a new job. Uh, so I just described the source as universal. Uh, URL would be the product URL that we get from products table. Uh, parse true and then parsing instructions. So this is the part where I told in my uh, presentation about this new cool feature that we are releasing, uh, custom parsers. So basically what you can do is provide some instructions uh, during the job creation, Yeah, provide some instructions on what fields do you want to parse. I'm particularly interested in price, uh, So, but it can be any, any label you want to you know at this point. So uh, I'm particularly interested in price, where I um, I provide functions, and that and that those functions are one function xpath one. That means I want to get one element using xpath, and in arguments uh, I set the xpath yeah to select the select HTML element, and another function is amount from string. That just basically. Um, returns a, a float value yeah, and removes all the currency symbols and so on. Okay, so we have uh, our payload uh, and what we need to do is just basically to pass that payload to, uh, to our API endpoint um, and whenever we post we get back a, a response and I just check the parsing status. Uh, 12,000 means that parsing was completed uh, and, and we get the data. So. I get the data from from the results. Uh, it's basically a JSON uh, JSON uh, response result where again I'm using GLOM to just uh, quickly select the price. Yeah. Um, and lastly, I connect to the da database uh, and I add products into product prices table. Yeah, product prices table. Uh, I, I add um, a product URL and the price. Um, yeah, so we can go to the user interface and check how it looks like how it looks uh, in action. Um, scrape products. I'm going to run uh, a new new task, uh, and if I open it here, we should see. Yeah, so some uh, some some task already uh, queued, and it should run. Probably take a, a bit more time because uh, uh, yeah, it's 21 task in parallel running. You can open a single task uh, logs and check how it looks like. So here we go. Uh, all our tasks are successfully finished. Uh, you can see that we don't have any error here. Uh, before I was running, uh, testing other uh, product URLs, so I can show you how it looks like when some of the tasks fail. Um, you can see that most are successful, but uh, one failed because there was some mistake in the code. Uh, but basically, uh, it's also great that you can, uh, in the Airflow, you can provide some callback functions. Uh, for example, if the task is failing, yeah, you can provide callback function which can do some reporting, send a Slack message, or or email you to you know to to get your attention. Um, okay, so all the tasks are done. Uh, now what's left to go to the database, uh, go to product prices. This is the table where I store the product prices. Uh, and we can see that yeah, the URLs were scraped, and here in price column we have all the prices. And basically, um, if I run it again, yeah, uh, 
it would, you know, uh, go to the, all the URLs and scrape it again and get the par uh, price data. So the idea here is that uh, in, in Airflow, you can, s you can use a cron tab to set uh, and, and schedule the task, yeah, to run it in the future. You can do it, uh, you know, maybe you want to run a crawling job every day uh, and scraping every day, or you can run it, you know, every hour or minute or whatever. It depends on you, and and you can easily just set uh, set the cron tab here, or it can be configured uh, using uh, some uh, environment variables, uh, and you can actually even configure it via uh, Airflow user interface. So let's check our tasks are still running. Uh, yep, and if I open the table again, we should get more more products. So here we go. Uh, the scraping was uh, was completed again uh, and we collected the prices again. Of course they are not changing now, they're not different now, yeah. It's the, the same moment uh, and I'm not sure if the prices change on that website so often but anyway if you would have some uh, some you know, competitors website that you want to check the prices you could do the crawling uh, more often and, and get the prices. Now the next step would be to you know do some data uh, analysis on this data, um, but that you know depends really on the business case, uh, which I'm not covering today uh, in this webinar. So that was it, guys, uh, and we can go back to to answer some of the common questions you asked. Uh, my website that I, I want to scrape uses Antibot uh, Data Dom. Is Scraper API able to bypass blocks uh, for website with such solutions? Um, Yes, our solution is able to bypass Datadom and many other uh, antibot solutions that are on market. I'm currently using proxies and in order to integrate an API, it's a lot of work for me. Uh, it's a lot of work for me. Is there any other way I could implement this solution? Uh, well, Scraper API is an API endpoint and you cannot just uh, change it to, with your proxies, uh, but um, what I would uh, offer you to do, uh, go to our website, oxlab.io, and check our product, uh, Webon Blocker, which could be easily replaced, um, which uh, you can easily replace uh, your proxies with. Third question, uh, I need to check around 10 million products daily. Can I submit all URLs at once? Should I do this every day? Uh, yeah, well, you cannot submit 10 million at once, but we have batching, so you can batch uh, uh, your your uh, jobs in a thousand, thousand requests. So you can have like a thousand uh, jobs created by one batch. Uh, and you should probably not do that daily. If you want, you can use our sh uh, scheduling uh, uh, product that, uh, that you can set schedules to do the jobs uh, every day. Uh, and the last question would be, currently I'm using Selenium to open e-commerce site pages uh, in order to see prices, discounts and availability. Does your API work with Selenium? Uh, no, our API doesn't work with Selenium, but uh, what Scraper API has is a render parameter. So you don't even need Selenium. You can just uh, create job, specify a render parameter, and, uh, and we are going to render the website, render the JavaScript, and you get your, your prices uh, and all the data you need. Uh, so that was it for commonly asked questions and I hope that team answered your questions in QA box. If you have any more questions, you can find me on LinkedIn uh, or you can write to events at oxlabs.io. Um, I hope that you had, uh, I hope that information was useful for you and see you next time. Bye.